Hey everyone, Chris here again. Today I'm going to talk about how you can get WordPress running for free, basically forever, on Google Cloud Platform. And in addition to this, I'm going to be showing off a little bit about uh, Docker, because I'm going to be doing it through Docker, uh, using Docker Compose specifically. Basically because I don't really know how to set up WordPress, and I don't really want to figure it out. So that's the advantage of Docker. You can just run stuff and not know how they work. So first of all, let's talk about Google Cloud Platform. You know, it's a cloud platform similar to AWS. One kind of interesting feature that stuck out to me was this uh, always free usage limits. Uh, you'll notice that it says you get one non preemptible F1 micro VM instance per month in one of these regions. So basically, you can get an F1 micro instance for free forever as long as it's in one of these regions. Now, what is an F1 micro instance? Well, it's a laughably small instance, it has one virtual CPU. It only has about 600 megabytes of RAM. It's ridiculously small. Uh, and it's not really appropriate for running WordPress, but we can make it work. So the idea here is we get something that works. You get a nice WordPress blog going. Over time, if, it, if it's successful, you can grow the VM. But it's a nice way to dip your toe into WordPress blogging without needing to commit any money. So let's get started go to cloud.google.com and you can set up a new Google Cloud account. I already have mine set up so I'm going to go directly to the console. The good news is when you get started you actually start with a like a $300 credit or something for a full year. So here we are. I'm in my cloud platform. You'll notice that uh, I'm still in my free trial and what I'm going to do, I think uh, it's been so long since I've done this, you do need to create a project when you first get going. For me, I can just go to the top here and click New Project. I'm not going to use this other project for this video. And you can give it some name. So I'm going to call it WordPress for free. And we will create this. Now it's going to take a little while, but once the project is created, you can go up and switch to the project. Okay, now this project has nothing in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to go to Compute Engine and VM Instances. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create an instance. I'm going to name it WordPress. And we are going to create it in US Central 1. Now, here's the trick. Uh, by default, this starts out as a one virtual CPU instance with 3.75 gigs of RAM. You'll notice that that would cost us normally $24 a month. I'm going to go and flip it to a micro instance, 0.6 gig of RAM, pretty pretty laughable. Uh, it would cost $4.28 per month to run it, but since this is, uh, if it's your first F1 micro instance, it actually will cost nothing because the first 744 hours of usage are free. You can do the math on that. That's a full month. Now, you got to choose what OS you're going to run with this. Uh, by default, it gives you Debian Linux 9. I'm going to change this uh, because this instance has so little RAM, we need to be very careful with what's on it. So there are these uh, minimal Ubuntu instances. I'm going to choose 16.04. And I'm going to select that. And we'll open up HTTP and HTTPS traffic and we will create the instance. Okay, so we have an instance in US Central 1. We can connect to it with this uh, SSH link here and that will open a new window that will connect by SSH. Alright, so to start with let's look at this image a little bit. If I run top, you'll notice that it's got very little RAM free. Uh, we're gonna have to do something about that. So the way we can cheat is we actually can create a swap disk. It's not a super great idea to run swap on a, uh, on a web host, uh, but this instance is so small, and initially the idea is your traffic will be low enough that it won't really matter too much. If over time your blog does better, you can grow your instance. So to start with, I'm going to create a Linux swap file. Uh, the way to do that is with sudo f allocate um, and we're going to create a 4 gig swap file that uh, that's an L by the way not a 1 
and I'm going to put it right on the root in a file called swap file. Okay, so let's go and have a look. There's my four gigabyte swap file. So we need to use this as actual swap memory, basically. But first of all, we need to change the permissions on this. So I'm going to uh, change it to 600 on swap file. Uh, I do need to do sudo on that. Have another look at that. And we'll see that read write only for root has this now. And we need to tell the system that this actually is swap. Okay, so uh, make swap. I think what this does is it formats the contents of the file so that it is a swap file. There we go. So it actually set up swap space inside that file and we can turn it on. Swap on. We're going to use swap file. Okay, now if I go top again, now we see there is four gigs of swap space free. So if I go over the very tiny amount of RAM that I have, I will go in a swap and at least I won't crash the server. Now we want to make this change permanent. So first of all, I don't know if these micro instances have VI installed. No. So I'm going to do a sudo apt install vim. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open up the FS tab. Uh, And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this swap file permanent for my system. Okay, so I just need to add a new line at the end of this. If you don't know how to use VI, you can use any other editor. I just happen to use VI. Okay, so the magic words for this are swap file. That's the file we're going to use. None swap SW00. Basically it means I'm using forward slash swap file as a swap partition and I'm going to save that okay so that wrote out to FS tab if I want to be sure that this works the way I think it does I can exit and I can stop my VM and then restart it okay it's stopped and I'm now going to start it again Okay, start it back up and I can reconnect by SSH. Okay, and I'm back. If I just run top, we'll see that the swap space is still in place. So, we have an instance now that can do something. Uh, however, we want to run WordPress on this. I said we were going to run it with Docker, specifically Docker Compose. We're going to need to install Docker on this machine. So, this is a very minimal machine. Uh, if I type docker right now, you'll see it's not installed. So if we go to um, git.docker.com, there's a, uh, a shell script here that uh, the people at Docker provide. If I get this onto my machine, then it should install Docker. So let's, uh, let's give that a try. So, okay, so I'm going to do a curl on this. And I'm going to output it to install docker.sh. Okay, I have installed Docker. I need to um, change this so I can execute it. Let's just do 755, uninstall Docker, and then I will do a sudo install Docker. Okay, now it also says during the install if you'd like to use Docker as a non root user, you should run this. So sudo user mod ng docker so I'm basically I'm adding my user to the docker group there we go okay so now if I run docker container ls for instance okay so I added my user but I need to log out and log in okay let's try that again there we go so docker is working uh, however, I want to install Docker Compose as well. Okay, so I've gone over to the uh, Docker Compose documentation. And you'll notice it says to run this command to download the current stable release of Docker Compose. Really similar to what we just did. Now I've been having some trouble pasting this into here, so I'm just going to type it out. 
Uh, I did this before with Google Chrome, and probably that's what makes the difference. There, I've typed it out. Okay, so it downloaded Docker Compose and it put it in uh, user local bin Docker Compose. Uh, it does say that we need to do a siege mod on that guy. We need to make it executable, so that's fine. Okay, and it does help to type chmod. Okay, so now in theory, I can run docker compose version. Okay, so I have docker compose installed as well. So, we are all set up and we should be able to install WordPress on this thing. Now, I forked a GitHub repository from another guy who had figured out how to run WordPress inside Docker Compose. So I'll put the link to my forked version in the description below. This may continue to evolve a little bit as I tinker with it, but we'll get that URL there. Oh, and we need to install git as well. So sudo apt install, yes, git. And we'll try that again. Okay. I can go into that. So, we have a Docker Compose YAML file. This thing is set up to run on port 80. You'll notice right here we're exposing port 80. If you don't really know Docker or Docker Compose, it's not really necessary to be able to run this. But uh, let's let's actually run it. So you run Docker Compose up, and D is detached, so we don't see log output as we're running it. And what it will do is it will download the MySQL and the WordPress images from Docker Hub. So here it's creating the uh, Docker containers. So let's just have a look. Docker container ls. We have two things up. One thing is MySQL and one thing is WordPress. So here's the advantage of Docker. I don't want to figure out how to set up and install MySQL. I don't want to figure out how to set up and install WordPress. But the advantage of Docker is using a script like uh, Docker Compose in this instance. We can download container images of these two things. It'll bring them up pre-configured to talk to each other. So no mystery. All right, so now did this actually work? Well. If we go back over to our compute engine, you'll notice there's an external IP on here. If we just go to the HTTP version of this, so it's 3518849.1. So, okay, and hit enter. Now, it may take a little while because WordPress needs to initialize the first time. All right, so I had some timeouts, um, and I wasn't really sure what the issue was. So what I ended up doing was I ended up uh, restarting my instance. Uh, I went over to the compute engine, and uh, I stopped my instance. I started it again, and then what I did was I went into my session, and I did a Docker Compose start. Not up. Docker Compose up creates a new instance. So I did a Docker Compose start to start it up again. It seems like it needed some time to initialize. Once it was fully initialized, I was able to hit the instance at the IP address. So from here, I mean, I can just go ahead and create my WordPress instance, no problem. So this, I could run it forever for free, essentially, as long as it's the only F1 micro instance I have running. Now, there's some issues. I mean, obviously, we don't want to run it just on this IP address forever. You're kind of probably going to want to bind it to a real domain name. So that's what I'm going to show next is how to set this up against a real domain name. Thanks for watching and like or subscribe please.